Good afternoon. What? Yeah, welcome. Um, I think we have a few more minutes left, but can we start? All right, we're good to start. Cool. Um, yeah, because in this content, we have a lot to do, a lot to show. Uh, therefore, if I may ask uh, to leave all your questions to the end of the session, so I make sure that we finish all the demos and stuff. Okay, thanks. So, yeah, welcome to the Advanced Protection Against Advanced Threats session. My name is Albert Saus. I'm a senior premier field engineer from Microsoft. So uh, I work with a lot of the guys here in the room too. So thank you for making it. All right, so let's kick this off. Today, we will be covering the different threats that we have out there. So how modern they've become, how things have changed in the way that attackers try to get into your environment. So apart from that, more importantly, we want to deal with um, advanced threat protection, advanced security management. These are the features that we have in Office 365 that would help you out in dealing with those, these new threats that come about. So that would be your key takeaways in this session. Okay. All right, so first off, we will cover the different challenges that we have in the IT most of which you may be very familiar with already. So in this slide, we see first, people's work expectations. How many of you here have had issues dealing with your users? Yeah, everybody would. I would not even ask you to show your hands because that would be everyone anyway. So what types of um, challenges do we have with the users? I'd say things like bringing their own devices, right? So how many times have people come in and say, oh, I brought my, my personal laptop, my Android device, my iPad, and, and whatever, and I want to use it to uh, synchronize my emails, get access to network uh, shares and uh, documents, right? So people's work expectations. Uh, and the message, messaging side of things, you would see people saying that, hey, when people send me messages in IM, it's very quick should be the same for emails, right? Uh, no. So yeah, we need to deal with these types of uh, work expectations from the users. The other one would be the evolving threat landscape. So in the past, we've dealt a lot with malware. We'll, we've dealt a lot with spam. Uh, we've had issues with all sorts of attacks, right? They're still there. And the change there is the process by which they do the attacks, right? It's not just, yeah, just throwing a bunch of spam to everybody. Now they're trying to become smarter. They put in things like uh, social engineering to learn who to attack too. Cool? All right, finally you got industry regulations to deal with. So the big word that comes to my head here is compliance, right? So we're, we're expected to keep emails for how long? Seven years, 10 years? In some organizations I've worked with, they keep it indefinitely. Why? Because they don't know the real, <laughs> the real regulation for their environment, right? So yeah, those things we'll have to deal with, but you get a bunch of nasty emails coming in, you end, you end up keeping them as well, right? With the likes of journaling, Enterprise Vault, you need to deal with that by filtering out emails that you don't want to keep for seven years, okay? Okay. So in this slide, let me introduce you to this organization called Strontium. Have you heard of Strontium before? Now, how, yeah, Strontium is a group uh, that specializes in stealing information. You might ask, how do we know about them? Because our Microsoft internal IT has seen their activities within our own network. And it's interesting to find out that they've seen Strontium having a standard operating procedure and how they work. So the first one in this um, elaborate scheme of things would be reconnaissance. So here you would see a lot of different emails that kind of look legitimate, right? The, the, the users in your organization would receive similar emails that look um, genuine. 
So people would be tempted or lured into clicking the links that are in there. Oh, you need to change your password. Obviously, an ordinary user would just click away. Mm -hmm. So after that, you go to point two, where those URLs might actually be pointing to uh, a different link. So this is what we saw in the background, that you click a link, it leads you to a sort of similar looking URLs, in effect, that makes you cross-eyed, right? So you think it's still the same one. But yeah, um, all to deceive the users. And that's the time that they have the opportunity to be able to get information. So a lot of the information that we gather from, uh, that they gather from these clicks would be your user credentials, obviously. And then you get browser information as well, always information. Why do they need that stuff? Because they need to know the platform that they are going to attack, all right? So after that, Strontium would, uh, would go ahead and perform the social engineering stuff, right? Determine who are the users to attack. Who are the high value targets? It's not just executives, right? The first thing that comes to your head is executives. No, it would be you guys, administrators. Your accounts are very high valued because you have access to mostly anything, okay? So you get targeted by these types of attacks and then if it so happens that you um, were led into clicking URLs or downloading um, the attachments, what do you get? Malicious payload. So they take advantage of what we call zero day vulnerabilities. These zero day attacks are very notoriously hard to detect, especially with traditional mechanisms. What is the traditional way of detecting attacks or malicious code? Yeah, antivirus, um, mostly based on signatures, but what if you don't have the signatures yet? How do you get protected? You don't know this new code. We haven't had a signature for that released, right? Worst case is, it takes several days or even weeks or even months to get the signature out for these zero day attacks. And finally, once you get that malware installed, they have a chance to install DLLs that gain control over your C2, which stands for command and conquer, oh, command and control. <laughs> That's a game, sorry. So, <laughs> so command and control. So that basically means that the software can tell your computer what to do in the background. And you don't want that, definitely. All right, so that's pretty clear that we have a sophisticated way by which these, um, these attackers do their job nowadays. They need to become smarter because you guys are getting smarter, but it's a game, right? So in Microsoft, as you would know already from the keynote that we have a blue team and a red team that constantly do the attacks, red team being the attackers, blue team being the defenders. Uh, this is a good practice for, um, for them as well. And that's how they also found out, practicing the same um, methods of detecting these attacks. So I'd like to point out or summarize the challenges that we have. We have more attacks out there, obviously, because at the end of it all, it's just a business. So like a business, you want to grow it. How do you grow it? Attack more. The more you attack, the more likelihood of you getting a success here and there, right? Next, sophisticated adversaries. Perfect example, Strontium. And then you got targeted attacks, trying to determine who's the best people to attack. False positives, this is really bad because that's what I hear about from customers like yourself, complaints. Oh, we turn on this feature, we turn on EOP, now we're getting a lot of false positives, right? So it's not enough that we turn these features on in Exchange Online, Office 365, but in a lot of ways we need to tune them too. So we need to know what settings to turn on, what worked for us, what's the uh, spam confidence level that, that would actually prevent false positives from happening. But yeah, that's how it goes. There's always some sort of configuration that needs to be taking in place. And finally, this is what 
user ex users expect. Zero latency I want it now. It's always the case. Now. All right, so we talked about challenges, that, but that's from the space where we are getting external attacks. So emails coming in, so those are the challenges. But now we also have challenges internally. So looking at here, we see a lot of numbers. 70% of enterprises hold back on getting into SaaS because of, uh, of the security challenges that we have, mainly like what? using personal accounts or personal, um, personal uh, SaaS apps in your organization. So there's not much control that you can have, right? So you can see that 87% of senior managers upload work files into uh, like Dropbox or something, not improved items. Uh, apart from that, I had this experience with another customer. They said, oh, we've been attacked by um, a phishing mail. I said, you had EOP on, right? Yeah. We saw the configuration. It's all configured well. How did it get in? The user was having a mail app on his phone. He's got his personal account. He's got his corporate account. He copied an email from the personal account to his corporate account through the phone. Did it go through malware, anti-malware? No. Right? So those are the things that we need to also mitigate. So we have a session tomorrow around how do you do that, right? But here, we can also have some things that would prevent um, or at least alert us on those types of activities, okay? All right, key things here. 75% 75, 75 of all network in intrusions are because of compromised credentials. So yeah, how many of you have seen your users putting their password on, an, on a sticky note and sticking it on their monitors. I've visited some of your places here. Don't deny it. <laughs> yeah. And finally, you know that, uh, yeah, it takes a while before you can get uh, detected and have signatures for those new attacks. All right. So let's get to the meat of this um, presentation. Advanced threat protection. Have you used this before? No, have you heard of it? Yep, today. <laughs> so advanced threat protection, it's on that notion that um, malicious code is being created and modified faster than it can be detected. So our product team thought of a way how to try and defend ourselves from that, right? So it's a multi-layered approach. ATP is just a small piece of that. It's an add-on, right? It's an add-on that you would put on top of your exchange online protection. As we all know, EOP is our solution uh, on the gateway for protecting against uh, malicious emails, right? But underneath, you might need to have or might want to have ATP to have additional protection, which is focusing on zero-day attacks, okay? So we try to reject early. At the first point, we do things like um, connection filtering, IP filtering, so we know that there's a reputation list that we will just block straight away. But where does ATP come in? On that part, you see ATP detonation because we like to blow things up. Uh, that's not us, so some other company blows things up. But <laughs> yeah, the 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 way that it works is that we have what we call a detonation chamber on this next slide, and that's over there. So an email comes in, Office 365, that goes to EOP. So happens it has an attachment. So looking at the flow of the attachment, it goes to that detonation chamber, which is what we also call sandboxing. Underneath that is us building a VM. We build a VM, some special form of Windows, and then we launch or open the attachment as if a user was doing it. How a normal user would open an attachment, if it's Word, if it's uh, Excel, or any support supported file type that is. They'll try to open it up and see what? See if it's trying to change registry keys. See if it's trying to make any 
um, malicious changes to the whole system, right? So what do you think that means? In terms of delays, right? You would get delays. And we have a published SLA around this, which is about four to five, take note, four to five, not 45 minutes, okay? So about four to five minutes, it should be done with doing that. Do you see an issue around that? Any scenario that would make that actually go longer? How about if I send you 10 attachments? Do you think that'll just spring up a single VM? Mm, no, that's what I found out. It'll spring up a VM for each of the attachments. Why? Because we need to isolate which one is bad. If, you, if I send you 10 attachments, it doesn't mean all of them are bad, right? So we need to identify which one. So that in itself was one of the reasons one of my customers says, uh, we turned it on and we turned it off <laughs> for now because we are introducing and I will introduce to you some changes to ATP and how it works so that it'll be better in terms of the latency for mail delivery, okay? All right, so it's not only attachments that, it, that we deal with. There's another one because apart from attachments, we also get um, attacks through links. So links, on that other side, you have safe links rewrite. As the term implies, we rewrite the URL. A user clicks on the URL, it actually redirects it to a different link. It's a link within Exchange Online Protection. All right, so that underneath, we're actually trying to go to the link ourselves first to see if there's anything bad about that URL. And if there's nothing wrong, then we let the user go through. I will show that in a moment, my demo. Okay, but that's how it works. All right, before the nice demo, I need to do some marketing. <laughs> so here are some, some numbers around ADP. Um, let's zoom that a bit. So on the left, you have safe attachments unique file scanning. This was last year's data. So up to December, we actually reached up to six million six million attach, attachments that we've scanned. That means these are unique attachments that don't have known signatures at that point, right? So that's a lot. So you can imagine it having more than double by now. But more interestingly, on this side, you'll see how many false positives do you see? And how, how many false negatives do you see? Zero, zero, sorry, point zero, 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 seven. That's very low, extremely low. Same thing for uh, false negatives. Quite impressive, right? But when you look at the numbers for the number of catches, <laughs> catch rate is also low. <laughs> no, don't think of it that way. So 0 0.3433 of the six million. So how many bad attachments have we caught? Quite a few, right? Quite a few. So I would say it is more effective than we thought it would be. Yeah? And it's pretty cool. All right, now let's dive in. So here, how do you get ATP? Two ways, it's an add-on that you can purchase, something like uh, maybe a couple of bucks per user per month. Or if you are having E5 licenses in your Office 365 subscription, then you would have ATP in there. So if you had ATP, going to Exchange Online Admin Center, you would have another node there on the left called Advanced Threats. So I hope everybody can see this all the way to the back. All right, so under Advanced Threats, you see a couple of settings that you can do. These are policies that you can define in terms of how do you deal with attachments? How would you deal with links? So let's first take a look at how we would want to probably deal with attachments. So simply clicking plus, and then what are our options? All right, off, so you're not gonna do any scanning at all. Monitor, continue delivering the message after the malware is detected, but you are going to track it anyway. So do you want to trial it and to see how it goes first? Are you going to have false positives? Right, might be a bit risky, you think, Right, because you're still gonna let it through. All right, so the other 
options that you have would be something like uh, block. Block the current and future emails with the detected malware or replace them. You will continue to deliver the message. They will still get the content, but the attachment will be gone. It will be replaced by another attachment that says, sorry, malware has been detected with your with the attachment, so you won't get it. But if you want to get it, you have that option to redirect. So where are you going to redirect this to? Your best friend, yes. So <laughs> your boss, yes. All right. So those are your options for that purpose. Um, now, when you create these policies, you don't target everyone. You don't need to target everyone. You can put in something like an, um, apply to who. Here's what people complain about. One, how come only recipients? Why, what if we don't want to scan or do ATP for some senders? You think you would need that? That's up to you. But yeah, that's, what some, that's some of the things I've heard from my customers. Uh, all the options that you see here are all focused on the recipient. So the recipient is a specific person. The recipient is belonging to uh, an SMTP domain or is a member of a group. Then likewise, when you add an exception, it's the same thing, same options. Quite limited at this point in time, but yet we have to deal with it for now because it's constantly improving anyway. And there are improvements that I will show you that are not yet here but are coming. Okay, so that's how you set safe attachment policies. Now, safe links is very similar in this one that I've created earlier. The settings would be it's on. You can do this. By default, it will track user clicks. So if we detected that a link has, uh, is pointing to something that is a malicious site, but the user still decides to click anyway, you'll have a report on that. Like, oh, these are been blocked, but the user decided to click anyway. It's all in the report. Yeah? Um, or simply, if there's anything bad, you can just say, do not allow users to click through. Right? Anything bad is there, don't let them click through. All right? In this case, I'm going to allow them to click through. So let's have a few samples there. The first thing that I want to sample is a few files. Uh, I got a few malware here. <laughs> Okay, that I am going to send through, I have to send it through Yahoo because the Microsoft Mail app doesn't let it. Cool, eh? <laughs> By default, we are secure. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's compose an email. So, compose an email, send it to my admin, and the subject is demo ignite. And we're going to attach what? Let's attach this first one. All right. So I attach the file. Just click on send. And hopefully, when it says send, we'll wait for it to get into the mail. It's been sent already. So here's me being a normal user. Where is it? Not yet through. All right. So it will take some time. But before we. Uh, but instead of waiting for that, I have done this a few times. So I'll show you what it looks like. So it looks something like this. Yeah. Can you guys see? Cool. It says there now, zero hour auto purge has, done, has been done. All right? So this zero hour auto purge is actually just a text file that says malware was detected in one or more attachments included with this email, email message. So the user never really got the, the attachment, but he got the email, okay? All right, but how does that look on, how do you know that it was ATP that did it? What do you think? I would do a call Microsoft? No, <laughs> just do look at the headers. Right? So when you look at the headers, not like that. <laughs> it should have been working. I hate it when that happens. So you look at the headers. Ah, 
have to do it this way. There. So who likes reading headers like this? Of course not. Just copy them all and use. Use what? Notepad? Same thing. No, not notepad. Go to aka.ms slash RCA, which is short for Remote Connectivity Analyzer. So also known as testconnectivity.microsoft.com. So here you have the message analyzer. Just go to that tab and paste your headers. Bam. And after that, you do analyze headers. Cool. So when you analyze headers, what do you see? Ooh, timing. There you go. We got two minutes and eight seconds that was done by your advanced threat protection. All right? And that's how long it took. The other way that you can see this is by looking at the mail flow message trace. So if I do, did a message trace right now, should come up soon. There you go. I'm going to do the past maybe seven days because I've been playing around a few days before. And I'm going to select my recipient to be admin. Mod, where are you? Here. So looking at that, do a search. And I quickly find that, yeah, this was the particular email. And I look at the details by double clicking. There you go. You see that? At this point in time, 2.23 a.m., advanced threat protection scanning in progress event is deferred. Okay? So the message trace easily lets you find what ATP has done. And it gives you the reason here. Plus, you kind of work out the time. You said 2 minutes and 28 seconds, so this is about correct. Oh, cool. Yeah. Easy? Yeah. All right. So now let's try to do a URL link. Okay. So I'm going to send using my mail app now. Uh, new email. Same user. But this time, ignite link. Ignite link. Then going back my, sorry, I'm going to get one nasty link over here, all right, then I'll copy that to this one, so now I have a link, so I send that across, once I get it in my Office 365 mailbox, here, Let's just wait for it. Uh, you see how the other email hasn't come in? <laughs> yeah, that's more than four minutes now, eh? Okay. Um, yeah. So let's go to the link first. What I want you to look at is the URL bar up there. So it's not going to show me the actual link, but it takes me where? NA01, North America. Safe link, see? So because it's a bad link, it's given me this message that was courtesy of advanced threat detection, safe links. Okay? So now you're given the chance because based on our policy, we still allow the user to click anyway, right? Again, you can stop that if you wanted to. Let me click it. You want me to click it? No? Yeah? I'll click it. Yeah. All right. But what happens when I click it? Something has been reported as unsafe. Who's working here? Is it still ATP doing the job here? Edge. The one, yeah. So, yeah, Edge works. <laughs> it's not part of the session, yeah, but Edge works. Cool. Yeah, but that, that's how safe links work. And now, we said we were, tracking, we were tracking the clicks, right, based on our policy. So we go back to, um, we go back not to the message trace now. You notice with ATP, we have a new tab here called URL trace. So let's try to run that. So URL, URL trace. Come on. There it 
There you go. Let's also try past seven days and add the same recipient. So we'll have smaller results. There you go. And do a search. Huh. Ah, what do you see now? There's that guy. It was different. Click through there. Yes, he clicked through. So you'll have that list of people who clicked through and who didn't, right? So you'll see who's sensible and who's not. Yeah. Mm. OK. Yep, I hope that demo gives you an insight on what ATP can do, right, on zero-day protection. But again, our concern would be what? Latency, especially with the attachment thing. So my next few slides would talk about how do we deal with the latency. These are the things that are coming up soon. Ah, I need to show this more clearly. There's a new option there. See? Notice? Dynamic delivery. What does it mean? We deliver the message immediately, but not the attachment. So we replace the attachment with something like, uh, yeah, this is the message, but you'll have to wait for your attachment because we're still scanning it. Cool? Cool. Yeah, and that's what we want, um, to give a better user experience. So they would probably have something like this, right? Oh, this is the redirection, sorry. This is just to redirect the message to an administrator. But some of the reports that you can get are the following. So how many malicious word attachments have been detected? How many Excel, how many PowerPoint, et cetera? So you have them in a nice graph over here. And some other reports that you can get would be by disposition. So disposition, disposition being uh, related to the policy that you create. So a couple of views, really. That's all we have for now. But, oops. Going back. Sorry. There. So doing dynamic delivery now. For example, we have an email that actually has malicious code. So how would dynamic delivery work? So I get that email. It's a Word document that was sent. So on the recipient side of things, what you'll see is that it's no longer the file. It says advanced threat protection. Okay. That file, if you open it, it says advanced threat protection, safe attachment scan in progress. Cool. And then if it has a malware, you see that there was a change in the file name. So the file name became malware, ma malware alert. So we did find malware in that file. Okay. And if you open that message, that's how it goes. Now, this is just a slight difference if it's a clean attachment. We're still going to delay it, of course, because we still have to, to sandbox it and do the detonation. So same thing, but then if it's a clean, it just automatically, automatically <laughs> turns into the actual file, right? Very simple. And looking at that, again, in the same message trace that I performed before, you would see that there was advanced threat protection working and so on, right? Do you like dynamic delivery? You want it now? You have to wait. <laughs> I'm still waiting. I thought it would be there for me to demo. Damn. All right, cool. So safe links. We also are making some changes in the safe links. That little box there on top that says, show you that. Use safe attachments to scan downloadable content. So a link can actually just be a download link already. So when you click on it, it starts downloading, right? As so this moment, we don't have that yet. So what we are going to do soon ish is that when you click on the link and it's automatically downloading stuff we sandbox that as well all right and you'll get the same experience with dynamic delivery if you turn that on okay. 
in, you get the same message that you've seen before, and this is the message that you'll get. This link is being scanned versus this attachment is being scanned, okay? All right, so you can do that URL trace that we saw earlier. This is the same sample where you know which users to click through. Fine, cool. All right, so time is good. Hopefully we have time for questions, but we need to move on straight to advanced security management. So advanced security management, similar to advanced threat protection, is also part of the E5 license, okay? And it can also be an add-on that you can purchase. So threat detection, enhanced control, discovery, and insights, these are all the things that we want. We want to see if there are attacks happening, okay? We want to have control over policies, right? We want to be able to granularly set what we want to capture. We don't want to have false positives in terms of alerts, right? And obviously, all of that to be able to identify high risks, to be able to identify threats. So how does it look like? It's something like this. Uh, you'll see this in the demo anyway. But one thing I, point, I want to point out here is this. You see that risk score is similar to what you have in emails right now. What was it? SEL, spam confidence level. But this one is risk factors. That's based on a different set of um, criteria, I would say. What should, what should be some of the criteria that we use? Using a risky IP address, coming from a dodgy network, um, doing mass downloads, right? So those are some of the examples of risk factors. And we aggregate them to come up with that score. And we can control the score that we want to get start getting alerts. If you want to get, uh, get alerts when you have 35%, yeah, do it. But if we want to be more you know, um, realistic and get only alerts that are yeah, relevant, then put it a bit higher. So we call that anomaly detection. And then there's also, yeah, this is an activity alert. Basically, because when you create policies, there are two types, anomaly detection policies and activity alert policies. So the anomaly one is based on an automatic algorithm that we have. So on the back end of it, it's a machine learning. And we have those smarts to go about and find out which is normal, which is not. But then the activity alerts are the things that you define. You know your environment better than we do, right? You know that this guy always sends bulk emails at this time, right? Therefore, you create an activity policy that says, oh, if it's, this guy is sending mass emails, it's normal. Versus the other guy who shouldn't be doing that, okay? So you have all that control in your hands. Oops, did it again. I do that to save some breath, sorry. <laughs> okay, are we back? Cool. Ooh. I was escaping from the Zoom. Okay. All right, so we will create an activity policy later on, so don't worry about the slide. Um, how do you turn it on? If you go to security, and compliance portal, you may, I'll show you how to get to this one. It's just a tick box over there. It says, turn on advanced security management for Office 365. So tick it like that and say, go. That's it. And that, it leads you to this landing page. So at this landing page, straight away, it's asking you, go create your policies. OK? All right. So demo quickly. All right. If I were here, when you log into portal.office.com, you already have that opportunity to go to a security and compliance over here. Or if you're over in the office admin center, there's a way to get to it from here by clicking that. If you do it either way, it leads you to this page. Okay? Easy. All right. Now, 
To get to the advanced security management, you expand alerts and then choose manage advanced alerts. When you click that, now it already tells me go to advanced security management. It's because I've already ticked the box before. It's a one-time deal, right? Tick it, pay for it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not me, I mean Microsoft, so <laughs> it's all free. No. Um, yeah, talk to your account managers. They'll help you deal with it. Because uh, I haven't really found a way to disable it so far. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, see that I have my landing page. One thing to note is that at the top of that, the first time you log in, it's going to have a blue bar that says discovering or importing data from Azure AD because it needs to get that information from Azure AD, your users, your groups, etc. Okay. So inside that, you already have a basic set of policies. And it already tells me, hey, file containing PII. Who knows what PII is? Ooh, cool. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> yeah, personally identifiable information. So we have three matches of that. So people have been sending files or uploading files where SharePoint, right? So you can straight away just click on that. Yeah, what's that about? Who's been doing it? See, I have 27 collaborators. Project Falcon customer, nine matches. Ooh, you can just get into the details. Who did it? All right, so easy. Here you go. Provisioning user one is the owner. 27 collaborators, who are they? Ooh, so these are the guys. Patty Fernandez, Pradeep Gupta, etc. So, wow. That's a lot of information in one place, right? That you can just click away and get information about. So the discovery process has become very, very easy and fast, okay? But do take note that the first time you enable this, it will have a seven-day learning period. What does it need to learn? It needs to learn what's normal, what's not in your organization, right? Okay, so let's do something a bit fancier. Go back, going back to alerts, we see, ah, ooh, we got admin privileges were granted to somebody called bad admin. Ooh, this must be bad because he says bad admin. <laughs> All right, what you want to do with bad admin is this. You know that you, nobody, it was not sanctioned to have somebody given rights. Right? It needed to go change control. You were not aware of this. So therefore, what, what actions can you do? You can straight off go here and say, ooh, what's the action? Suspend the user. Let me do that. Who am I suspending? The bad admin, of course. And then just say, suspend user. And by doing that, oops, it should be suspended now. There, there's a governance log, it says. And I click on the governance log, and it tells me, What's the status of the action? Spending, all right? If I go back to my office admin center, maybe try to check on the user. I have my list of users here. So what would that do, you think? If you suspend the user, it will block the user. He will not have access. He tries to log into Office 365, portal to office365.com. Nope, your access has been blocked, all right? So if you search for the user, bad admin, spell it right, there you go. See the status? Blocked. Easy, right? Then I can go back to my, to governance log, to that alert, say for example, and where's that alert and bad admin? Yep, and I can say resolve, all right? I can resolve the alert, I can say I have suspended bad admin and say resolve, go. So it's not gonna be there anymore. Same thing, you can, if you find something in the alerts that you think, ah, oh, don't worry about that new location administrator, me, going to Australia and then accessing from New Zealand, <laughs> sorry. I've been remoting to servers, <laughs> so yeah. Um, I can just go ahead and say, yep, yeah, that's fine. I'll just dismiss that and say, it's me. <laughs> dismiss. Cool. 
Eh? <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> All right, so some more fancy things that you can do. Um, you want to dive into the policies, right? So if you do policies, just go control and say policies. Now you have here the default ones that come along with this. Let's try to do the general anomaly detection and then click on the settings for that one. Uh, yeah, I have to speed up. So you see here that there are a lot of risk factors. We talked about it a bit. So you see it's already checking logon failures, admin activity, inactive accounts, location, where are you trying to access this from. It may be, you can define networks that you say would be allowed or um, you would alert on if it's not this network. If you're doing an access of SharePoint files from a network which does not belong to your list, then you send an alert, all right? Then one thing is that you can configure alerts. What do you hate about alerts? There's just too much of them, right? So here you can say, just give me an alert limit of five, not too much of the same thing, right? So that's the, that's the limit. You can send alerts to your account, your email, or text. This one actually works. Uh, I'm not gonna demo it anymore, trust me. So <laughs> trust me, you're gonna take my word for it. Um, one other thing that I'd like you to see is this, yeah, there you go. We talked about the risk earlier. We said that we want to control what score we get alerts on. So at the default it's really low, 35. So you can slide that so that you can say, I only want to get alerts if it's medium or relatively high, like 70, right? So that's the control. Now, jumping up here, you can also apply filters to this particular, so let me cancel that first. Use the default. You can also do something like apply filters here. Um, say admin activity. I only want to see uh, admin activity, right? So you can actually make changes here. Only when administrative activity is true. So what's the result of that? Ah. So any admin activity shows up, see? Your administrator has done these things, added bad admin, resetted password, deleted users, see? So, so quick, it just gives you the data that you need, all right? Now what about activity policies? So the other policies that you can do would be the activity ones. So say do you do um, activity policy. We said we have templates, so we have a few templates up there. So if I choose something like administrative activity from non-admin IP, that seems interesting. And immediately it gives me the, the criteria. See the logic here. IP, is cat IP category does not equal admin and IP address is set and et cetera. But how do I know what is my administrative network? You define it. So you go to this gearbox over here and say IP address ranges. So you create an IP address range and say, oh, this one I pre-created, and I can go edit that one. Okay, anything that belongs to this IP address range is administrative, all right? So I can use this IP address list that I define so I can make my rules, right? So there's a bunch of things that you can do, all right? Finally, whew, it's more activity logs. So in this activity logs, these are all the activities that have been happening here. So say log ons or maybe, hmm, what's nice to use? Password resets. So let me just go view activities of the same type. Guess what happens? It gives me all activities about password resets. Not only that, from this search that you did, you can create a policy from this search like that. All right, and it has the conditions already. Quick and easy, again. Cool? And there is more. <laughs> um, you have built-in reports like this. You can see what browsers have people been using. See Edge, that version, Chrome, that version, and, and so on. You can see what accounts are being used. There you go. And you can see things like uh, activity by location. See, we got 30 events from the US, one from Australia, six from New Zealand. You can just drill down and click away. 
uh, happily, <laughs> like that. See, failed logons are happening. Mm. All right, cool. There's one other scenario I wanted to demo, but I didn't have the access to the lab, but I'm gonna show you a quick one um, in terms of a video. So this is an anomaly detection from a risky IP. Um, yeah, let's try this one. So let's see that there's a couple of alerts, anomaly detection. So Jerry, what you see here is that Jerry from Contoso, what has he done? He's used an anonymous proxy and as an administrator. So this is the first time that this proxy was ever used. What did he do? He set a forwarding address. So he forwarded emails to another address. Yeah, it's cool, is that cool? Under that would be the activity log. So you'll see a lot of information already summarized on the top. But the activity log down here will give you more details. So I will magically scroll that. There, <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, you see that, what did he do? He ran a forwarding, and it's forwarding to an email, where? In Russia, not conspicuous at all. Not suspicious, no, just Russia. <laughs> and you see here that it's also using a risky IP address. Based on machine learning, we know what's risky and not. So we have that list, so that's kind of risky, yeah? It's a good find. So you can make actions as we go on. You can block uh, Jerry and so on. Uh, he also has failed logons, by the way. And at the bottom of that, by doing more filters, we see that it's not only Jerry who has been affected. Yana as well, right? Even Yana has had this issue. You can export that information from that right top button. Um, now let's take a look at another one called, um, this is logging in or uh, impossible travel. So you see that William here has a suspicious activity because he connected from Australia and then from Mexico within how many minutes? 154 minutes. Can you travel to Mexico within that span of time? RDP, RDP, someone's saying, if you RDP to your server in those, yeah, probably, yes. That's where you put exceptions, right? Right, okay. So, in this case, yeah, it may be something malicious. And you can see from the activities that we're not just tracking logon events. We're also tracking things like SharePoint access, deleting routes, um, editing files, and so on. Cool? Who likes ASM now? Yeah. All right, so how does it all work in the background? We only have a few minutes left. So it's all doing machine learning in summary. I'm not gonna explain this too much. So we have an API that gets all that data from Office 365, and that cloud app security is the engine, the brains behind this. Without cloud app security, you get some sort of intelligence feed into it. So it tries to make sense of the data that we have, okay? And we also have the Microsoft Threat Intelligence Center because that's where we have knowledge about what is a risky IP, what is the list, a list of bad IPs out there, et cetera. So we try to put that in to the information that we got from Office 365. Um, we also monitor customer IP settings. Now, taking all that into consideration, we try to apply the policies that you guys have created, all right? Based on those policies, we aggregate the scores from the risk factors and then we decide whether to send you alerts. Now, talking a little bit more on that anomaly detection risk factors, sort of looks like this. These are the different criteria underneath. Location, user agent, admin user. The, the more you get scored, we average that out, and then that will come up with 85% and so on. Then you can get alerts. So bottom line, we want you to be able to create your policies, make sure you tune them properly, um, yeah, and make sure you use the correct um, risk factor settings that you need to. Um, finally, reiterating the seven day learning period. So let's do a quick recap. Threats are evolving. We have now 
targeted attacks or sophisticated adversaries, but you have advanced threat protection in place that would help you out getting better. We have dynamic delivery coming, okay? And we have advanced security management to help you out. Now, we open the floor for questions. Oh yeah, that's good, sorry, I forgot about that. Um, geez. So the question was, can we actually take actions? Uh, let's try to make a policy. Uh, under the policy, oh geez. Quickly now, we go to the policy and say create an activity policy. At the bottom, you, in Office 365, for example, I can just go suspend the user immediately. Yeah, we have an alert for this type of activity, just suspend the user, why? You got an, uh, automatic remediation, you protected your environment straight off with, without having to wait for you to look at it. Any others? Thank you. I didn't pay him to ask that. <laughs> Any other questions? Cool. Cool, but if you have questions in mind, I'll be at the hub every now and then you can catch me there. And before we go, final note. Yeah. That's how we roll. So protection is evolving as the attacks evolve as well. All right, we change the wheel as the car moves. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please don't forget to fill out your surveys and have a chance to win a Surface Pro 4. Thank you. Thank you.